This is my last part of the uh, Apex Asia Pacific Summit um, presentation, the keynote presentation I'm going to be doing later today on uh, ultraviolet data. So we're starting at slide 24 um, and looking at capturing missing ultraviolet data. Um, how do we do it? Yeah, that's a good question. Talking of the violent data really is, is, is the best practices of how to do it. Uh, now that we understand what it is and uh, the different types, is the, be the best bet is to try to go after as much data as we can. I, I, I realize that um, people can't even utilize the data they have. So there's an argument uh, whether we should be going and drive and collect more. Um, although storage is cheap and um, bandwidth is cheap as well. And uh, you never know when you're going to need data that you know, if you didn't collect it, you don't have it. So my, my, my basic caveat in the very beginning is, is you should always go for more than less because if you end up not collecting it, you don't have it. Um, you can track, you need to track campaigns carefully because, and, and um, a lot of this because I'm really focusing more on social data, but I think it's clear now that financial data and house data and cost system data, while they existed independently, are more and more just becoming part of big data along with social data. And social data is making up the very much you know, mobile data, including in part of social data, um, a big part of all of this. So um, it, because so many people are interacting online uh, and that so much of this is now happening through social media, um, you need to track that. And, and again, there's privacy issues. It, it's all how you do it. And, uh, um, you know, there are ways of, of, of using and capturing social data and correlating that. Um, and, and those things are probably needed um, in order to get the kind of results. So clearly there's going to be a war with privacy versus um, collecting of the data. Um, and whether you should or not, but I, I, I tend to think that this is a war we're fighting and all that um, is already pretty much. Um, if you're worried about privacy, you're not going to be online at all, and even if you're not online, you're, you're not going to avoid um, having things recorded. So I, I, I kind of feel we need to change our ideas about these things, but also be more realistic about the opportunities and perhaps own some of that data ourselves uh, so we can profit. Anyway, we need to be able to enable the tracking, that's point three. And that's really basically a lot of what an audit is about, is figuring out where to, to check things and how to check them. And then four, we need to uh, integrate this, uh, this, all this data together, this e-commerce data together. Uh, and then correlate that five with um, different identities and personas. And that's one of the focuses of the next set of slides, slides that I have on um, a company called Six Degree. I have Andrew Wong here in the audience today um, who can speak to more about their solution. Um, but he's quite, uh, we worked together on some of the slides here that follow. Um, we, we, we can certainly use all this data to track your competitors and your, your customers and your competitors' customers. You know, in other words, it's not just for you, but also you can do it for them as well. Um, and, and certainly that's ultraviolet data for you. You don't, don't have it and you need it. Um, and, uh, but you want it or don't even realize how much you might need it. Um, your competitors and, um, you know, probably the, the followers and the likes of your competitors are, are those people are probably related to you. They're probably the people that will also come to your site. When I used to work at monster.com a couple of years ago, a job search site, uh, we used to use um, Comscore to, to figure out who was coming to monster.com that was also coming to Career Builder and, uh, and, and LinkedIn and various other job search type sites and uh, what, how that was changing over it from month to month. Corporate needed it. Um, but, you know, certainly it's gotten way more sophisticated than that. Um, and now if we go to the next slide, this is 27, you see that ultraviolet data can be used for targeting uh, acquisition. For example, here's two interlaced uh, rectangles. Um, they're showing Qantas and Virgin Airlines. Um, uh, in this version of the software, 
um, Twitter profiles that we're going to use um, pretty soon. It's going to be a much more robust and inclusive um, bunch of data that's going to be collected by Six Degree um, to show um, the the followers of your uh, of your competitors, you know, and how you may be able to acquire them by getting this useful ultraviolet information. Now. The platform helps you save time, so the value of a platform that collects ultraviolet data is going to save you a lot of time if you get the right one. And of course, that's why I wrote the book. I wrote the book on social media analytics to try to figure that out um, and, and give you that information, and you can get a copy of it in the back um, after we're done. And I'll be doing the book signing today. But if we go further. Let's look at in a particular case. When I started working with Andrew at uh, Six Degree, um, one of the clients that I'm, I'm still pitching, I've, had, uh, I've spoken to, is uh, a guy called Anthony Gentleman. He's pretty big in Rhode Island and uh, in, in the United States. And uh, among the other things, he had run for Congress in, in, in 2010 um, for the U.S. So the, I think the first congressional district in Rhode Island is only two. Um, you know, the current, he didn't uh, didn't uh, make it then, but uh, it, it's rumored that he's going to be possibly running again. What it does or not, we put together this very nice kind of dashboard uh, in six degree that shows the overlapping, um, um, you could say, constituencies is too, too loose a word, but they're basically uh, the followers, the Twitter followers and the overlap between Anthony DeGender and, and David Cicilline. Um, you know, they have 653 in common, but, uh, but Cicilline has 200, uh, 200, over 2,000 that aren't to go after them. And among them is uh, Nancy Pelosi, who was the former Speaker of the House. You know, so, um, you know, uh, they're, they're, we also were able to geolocate it to, down to Rhode Island. So we were collecting everything radius you know, from Providence, Rhode Island. Where the capital is, um, and uh, the other thing is that we can use this ultraviolet segmentation data to, um, on slide 29, um, to look at different channels of your business and to do various segmentations. So six degree does some very nice data cuts. Um, I'm working with them to, in fact, even widen those data cuts. But certainly the potential is enormous to mine this data. Um, and they're doing it very successfully. Here's the Facebook and Twitter pages uh, and the segmentations. And now, finally, also, social data being extremely valuable for collecting and layering demographic, psychographics, and lifestyle information, professional professions, and, and, and attitudinal data of buying, um, and as well as detecting influencers, bloggers, commenters, detractors, gatekeepers. And so now we go forward to slide 31 and talk about um, identity capture IDs, personas, customers using the social identity, build connections. Uh, um, you can actually collect a lot of the data if you need to know um, And you can also use it as a data. This is slide 32. Um, it's another aspect of six degree that captures uh, engagement data. Um, and uh, over time, this is focused on Facebook. Um, so and it, it helps you figure out which content is engaging um, uh, as well. And then if we look at, um, uh, we can look at some additional readouts uh, here. To, this comes actually from, I believe, Web Analytics. I'm not really sure there, but it, it's looking at uh, uh, the content that has potential to go viral. And then slide um, 34, we're actually looking at the potential here for um, um, so it's a web analytics categorization readout, um, which people are familiar with Google Analytics know you can do this. You, you can uh, segment various parts of, uh, of your site uh, and say this these pages about music, these people are pages about sports, these pages about book. Now if you tie in this data with the social uh, component that feeds back into those pages, um, then you can see how your content changes the way people relate to your site. And that's, uh, you can also tie that in with e-com. You know, there's, there's no, almost no limit uh, to where you can go. In slide 35, we look at the various silos um, that exist with, so, with data in general. And, uh, you know, we have CRM, call center, e-com leads, 
um, and so on, often are in different parts of an organization. Actually, we will go into this in the last um, part of the video, the last video on the floor. Um, I thought it would be three, but it's turning out to be four, unless I talk faster. Cheers. <laughs>